campaigning to go in the Glasgow East by-election, and the position hasn't changed since it all kicked off more than two weeks ago. There's still no confident prediction of a winner. Labour has said from the outset that it would be tight and difficult. The SNP has promised an earthquake, but the signs have so far failed to appear on the polling radar. So what have been the talking points today? David Henderson has this report. Well, this is where the count takes place on Thursday night. The big question, how many votes will there be to count? At this time of year, turnout is expected to be low. But the Tories think voters in Glasgow East are ready to respond to the effort they've been putting in. They sense this election is very different from normal. This is a proud area, the people are proud, they're full of community spirit and, you know, I think they want to engage with the politicians and they do understand that in a by-election, if they really want change, they have to actually go and reflect that at the ballot box. For Labour, defeat in Glasgow East is a possibility, but their candidate still hopes to engineer a win. They've been brushing off concern that the timing of this poll will work against them. We've just been around a factory today which is absolutely buzzing with people working away. I think the notion that in the Glasgow Fair everything closes down and everybody goes away is a slightly old-fashioned uh, notion. We are not finding any drop-off in the canvassing that we are doing over the last couple of days that people are still very much around. Uh, so we've no reason to believe that that's going to have a big impact on turnout. Yet in just three years, Glasgow East has turned from one of Labour's safest seats into a key marginal. The Lib Dems say Labour's choice of date for this by-election will backfire. It's extremely cynical, but it's done by um, government parties, not infrequently. There's nothing new about it. This is kind of what you expect on these kind of elections. But I think it shows the extent to which the Labour vote uh, in the East End is vulnerable and that the Labour Party recognised that it's vulnerable to challenges by parties like ourselves. And the SNP are pulling out all the stops as they sent an unlikely win. People will be here to vote, uh, and they'll probably have the same opinions as the folk who are not here because they're off in the fair. So uh, I think we can do it. And uh, my dad used to tell me when I was a wee laddie trying to play golf, he used to say, play the balls that lies. We're playing the balls that lies in Glasgow East, and I think we can win the election. So the hard work remains to win over undecided voters. And you'll find a full list of candidates, along with lots more news and information about the by-election, on our website. Well, David is uh, with me now. Um, David, first of all, there's still silence from the, uh, the retiring MP, David Marshall, but stories keep emerging in one form or another about his expenses. I mean, what's the word from the campaign? Well, that's absolutely right. There have been reports today in the Sun newspaper about David Marshall's constituency office, which, of course, received generous public subsidy and which was in his home. Now, he's not the first MP to do that, of course, but the potential problem here is the claim in that newspaper that his daughter, Christina Marshall, had two private companies registered at that same address. The son said Christina Marshall registered those companies there in March. Now, that was picked up on today on the campaign trail by the Liberal Democrats. They say some serious questions have to be asked of Mr Marshall and the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrat candidate Ian Robertson said he would be looking for assurances that no taxpayers money was used for personal gain. Now in response Labour are making no direct comment on that article but they will say that as far as they're concerned David Marshall stood down as an MP on doctor's orders. They said they've got two doctor's letters saying he wasn't fit to carry on and they just have to accept that. But that's not really answering the question, is it, that will be in the, the minds of some voters? No, indeed it isn't. It will not. Uh, are we any the wiser, though, about a winner? I mean, you're going to give us a, a confident prediction this evening. I'd love to be able to predict <laughs> it, but I don't think anyone can predict uh, a winner with, with, uh, with any degree of accuracy. Some of the people we've been speaking to today expect a, a greatly reduced turnout, perhaps as low as 30%, with many Labour voters particularly staying at home, and a large swing to the opposition parties, mainly, though, to the the SNP. Now, Labour, of course, are defending a huge majority, 13,500 votes, but Labour people that we've spoken to believe their support has eroded to such an extent that the SNP could win uh, with a 500-vote mo majority. On the other hand, the bookies now have Labour as outright favourites. Uh, it's clear, though, at this point in time, there's still a very large number of undecided voters in Glasgow East. They are likely to make all the difference in this campaign. But what, of course, concerns Labour most of all is that all the opposition parties 
are being listened to by voters in Glasgow, much more than they ever were. You know, in the past, uh, the Tories were, were hate figures, N not so anymore. The SNP are not getting the door slammed in their faces, as used to happen even quite recently in Glasgow. So it means that whatever the result in Glasgow for the Labour Party, they will not be able to take these seats for granted in the way that they might have been able to in the past. OK, David, we'll see what happens. Not long to go now. Thanks very much. Well, on a visit to Jordan today, Barack Obama admitted that despite pledging his best efforts from day one, even if he's elected president, achieving...